Caitlin, streamlining and improving the HR process and the success rate of hires is a big challenge for all businesses, businesses of all sizes and stage of, of business. How does the Plum Solution solve this challenge? Uh, so we start with taking decades of industrial organizational psychology and we combine them with the power of artificial intelligence to be able to be more accurate at predicting whether or not the candidates in your applicant pool are going to be successful on the job. And so we are able to predict five times greater level of accuracy than a resume uh, based on quantifying really human potential, like are they, their ability to innovate, their ability to solve problems and matching that to what's needed for on the job success. How do you get the data to assess someone so quickly? So it's like a LinkedIn profile, but the inputs are completely different. So we're really asking people to prioritize, you know, what gets them up in the morning? You know, if they had unlimited resources, what would they delegate to other people? You know, asking them situational questions. What's the most effective way to respond to the situation? And so over a 30 minute assessment, we're really able to quantify their priorities and the things that they would rather not do if they didn't have to and, and really understanding those trade offs. And on the employer side, we really quantify what they need for success. You know, do they need somebody with leadership capabilities? Do they need somebody that can think outside the box? And what are they willing to give up in order to get somebody that's a rock star in those traits? And then we match them. So if you have 300 people apply for a job, we can tell you this is the 98 match and this is the 75 match and this is the 30 match and can identify that if somebody was a 30 for one job, maybe they're a 95 for a different job and really identifying that, that right fit. Well, I mean, hugely important to get the right applicant pool in there. And then when you add all that additional efficiency, you're really moving the needle significantly for the employer. Yes. Um, early on in your life and building your business, you've identified yourself as not following what you call the Zuckerberg pattern. What do you mean by that? So when it comes to building uh, a tech business, there is this idea that you know a lot of the times it's a young male right out of university that has a strong technical background. And That's so, what people expect to see. Exactly. And so you know when people are looking at investing their money, they're looking for ways to de-risk the investment. They're looking at what's been successful in the past. You know we can't know if the business is going to be successful, but I can look at what are the type of people that build successful businesses that have done it already. Right. And so as a method to de-risk the investment investors will look for those patterns. And so there are specific investment theses, like there must be a strong technical co-founder and that's the only recipe for success. There's a lot of patterns that I don't fit. And so when you're looking at somebody to take a risk in you and you don't have that pattern matching, there is a subconscious bias that's coming into play. And we need to tackle it. You do tackle it partly as your role uh, as a mentor, sponsor, advisor at Fierce Founders. Yes. How have you had an impact at Fierce Founders in Waterloo? Yeah, so four years ago when I moved to Waterloo, I was part of an accelerator program and out of 11 companies, there were two that had women CEOs. And out of all the employees in the program, all of the women, there were four women total. So we had a real problem in Waterloo four years ago and that's reflected in almost all other tech sectors. And so there was an initiative put together to create an accelerator and an incubator for women-led businesses. And I was able to get involved both by using our product to screen people to show which ones were naturally innovators and hard workers and so had the right potential to be successful as entrepreneurs, but then also to go in and coach the entrepreneurs on the things that you know, may make it challenging for them or skills that they should be better leveraging. And then to also provide an example of you know, the lessons learned when I did my seed round in angel financing and ways to make it you know, faster and, and more efficient for them to do it. And one of the best success stories is that one of the graduates from Fierce Founders Bootcamp actually entered a pitch competition that I had won two years ago. And uh, it's, it's staged, there's just different levels of winning, but the grand, grand prize, which I did not win, but the grand prize is a million dollars. And I ended up sneaking backstage into the green room right before she went on, and I said, I heard from angel investors and investors that heard you pitch today with all the other contestants, and they said, you're the one to win this, that you were exceptional and they were so blown away. And so you go out there and, and you've got this. So just putting that thought in her head made all the difference. She tells the story that you know, she wanted like the second, third, fourth, fifth place right. prize. She never thought that she would be the grand winner until I placed that you know, idea out there that that, that could happen. And, and you know whether or not that had an impact, it was still inspiring to be part of her journey because she ended up winning that million dollars. And I just met with her last night and one of the 
pieces that have helped me in my journey is having an executive coach. And, and she says, she's like, I talk to people all the time and they talk about their executive coach, but they don't share who that person is. They, they you know, they hoard that resource. Sure. And, uh, you know, the first thing I'm, I'm doing tomorrow is making that introduction to my executive coach and providing her that, that same secret weapon that's been really helpful with my journey.